and welcome to Mental Health Bites with me. In this podcast, we delve into a timely topic related to psychology, answer one of your burning questions, and provide you with an actionable, practical tip to improve your mental wellness every single day. Let's dive right in to the timely topic of the day. Today, we're diving into the world of expressive therapies. This is really fun. These are therapeutic practices that use creativity like arts, music, theater, and movement to improve mental wellness. In today's episode, we'll explore how expressive therapies work, the benefits, and answer a listener question about how these therapies might help with specific mental health concerns. And stick around until the end of the episode for a simple creative activity you can try at home. Expressive therapies have a rich history rooted in the early 20th century. While many think of therapy as something that happens in more of a one-to-one conversation, sort of that old idea of maybe sitting on a couch or laying down and having the therapist just talk to you, there's been so many more ways that therapy has been proven to work now. And expressive therapies emerge from a growing understanding that people often prefer to express themselves in ways beyond words. This can be especially handy if it's really hard for you to talk about trauma and stress, or if you have a hard time verbalizing your feelings. Art therapy took off in the 1940s thanks to pioneering therapists at the time like Margaret Nomberg and Edith Kramer. These therapists believed that artistic expression could reveal unconscious thoughts and feelings. Then there's music therapy, with roots going back to World War II, when musicians played for wounded soldiers and observed how music helped them recover emotionally and mentally. Expressive therapies have continued to evolve since then, and if you look at a comprehensive treatment program that is residential or an intensive outpatient program, most of them will incorporate some form of expressive therapies. And this can include anything from dance to drama to poetry to writing. Today, these therapies are widely recognized as an important adjunctive to more traditional evidence-based treatments for their ability to help people access deep emotions and heal in ways that might not happen through talking alone. So let's go over some of the most common types of expressive therapies and how they're used in mental health treatment. First, art therapy. This involves creating visual art to express what words can't, whether that's painting, drawing, or sculpting. A experienced art therapist can guide you through a therapeutic way of utilizing art to both help you process emotions in difficult situations, as well as learning new strategies on how to cope with these challenging situations and emotions. Many people find that art allows them to tap into feelings they didn't even know that they had, and without having to describe it in words, they are able to understand themselves a lot better. Next is music therapy. This is one of my favorites, being that I've been a hobbyist musician since I was four years old. And music therapy can involve a lot of different things. It's okay if you don't know how to play an instrument or to sing, because music therapy can involve listening to music. And of course, it does involve making music, but it can also involve using rhythm and movement to connect with your emotions. Whether you're tapping a drum or singing along to a favorite song, music has a way of bypassing the thinking brain and going straight to the heart. And in my opinion, music is the true universal language of the world. Then we have dance and movement therapy, which helps people use their bodies to process emotions. Movement can release pent up stress or trauma and reconnect you with your body's wisdom. It's especially useful for people who feel stuck emotionally. Drama therapy is another powerful tool. In this type of therapy, clients act out scenes, take on different roles, or use storytelling in various ways to explore personal issues. I also think that drama therapy includes reviewing and talking about important TV shows or films that might depict mental illness or common issues that people experience because it allows you to try on different perspectives, but also confront difficult emotions safely. In fact, I have heard people saying that Lion King is one of their favorite ways to utilize cinema therapy because it's a cartoon, but there's some real issues, real world issues and feelings that the animals are dealing with, but it feels so safe to be able to process those emotions, allow yourself to cry and respond. This is so helpful for people who feel like they can't express their emotions emotions. They don't like feeling vulnerable. This is an important first step to accessing those feelings. 
Finally, there's poetry and expressive writing therapy. So you do not have to be a great writer or even have a great imagination. Writing, nevertheless, can be an incredibly cathartic way to work through difficult emotions, clarify your thoughts, and find meaning in your experiences. Expressive writing exercises, when directed well, are often used to manage stressful times as well as finding coping strategies for emotion dysregulation. <laughs> Now let's move on to the Q&A segment. Here's a question from one of our listeners, and his name is Baron. He asks, I've heard about expressive therapy, but I'm not sure if it's right for me. I don't think of myself as a creative person, and I'm not sure how this can help. What issues is it most helpful with, and how do I know if I should try it? So this is an excellent question. Expressive therapy can be beneficial for a wide range of mental health concerns, especially when you're feeling blocked or having trouble putting your emotions into words. It's commonly used to help people process major stress and trauma, work through anxiety, and manage depression. But it can work for a lot of other types of concerns too. When I used to work at an intensive outpatient facility during my training, art therapy was an important part of the overall program. In fact, most of the individuals who were struggling from eating disorders at this facility were receiving art therapy twice a week. And what was helpful is that expressive therapies don't rely solely on talking. You might not even have to talk at all through an art therapy session. This is very helpful for people who might find talking about their trauma or stressors really overwhelming or somehow insufficient. Some people struggle to identify their feelings. There's a technical name for it. It's called alexithymia. And this is really a helpful adjunct for people who find it hard to label their emotions because you don't have to label it. You can process it in a different way. I also think that expressive therapies can be a really great entry point for younger patients, children, and teenagers who might process emotions more intuitively than verbally. As a child, you don't have full grasp of your language and especially emotion language, so art therapy can be a way to develop self-awareness in young ones. So if you've ever found yourself doodling during a tough conversation or just felt better after listening to a song that resonates with your mood, then you've already experienced a small part of what expressive therapy can offer. And in this next section of the podcast, I'm going to give you some practical tips to try expressive therapies for yourself. I want to give you some practical ways to boost your mental wellness and also give you one specific assignment called emotion mapping, which you should try at home and experience the benefits of expressive therapy for yourself. So first, some creative ways to boost mental wellness overall. Even if you're not in formal therapy, or even if you are, there's some simple ways to bring creativity into your own life every single day. Let me share a few ideas. First, keep a visual journal. This is not about perfect art, it's about expression. Try sketching how you feel today or use colors to represent your emotions. A quick five minute doodle could offer you deep insight into how you're feeling. And if you're used to working with journaling in writing and you're used to responding to journal prompts, for example, while you're journaling, try responding to the journal prompt without words and in pictures and symbols instead. That would be a great way to retool this. Two, move your body to music. Put on a song that matches your current mood and let your body move without any choreography. And don't judge yourself either. This can help release tension and reconnect you with your emotions in a powerful way. One of my favorite twists on this is to create an emotion playlist. I can create a playlist to motivate me. I can create a playlist to process sadness. I can create a playlist for expressing anger and frustration. But the idea is that even in creating the playlist, you're already accessing a creative part of your mind. You're already processing what's going on. And then as you're listening to the music and responding to it, that's another bi-directional effect because while you're responding with your emotions to the music that you put together, it can help you to process it even further and to offer a type of catharsis, a type of release from a difficult emotion. And three, write without editing. I know that sometimes people feel really overwhelmed to have to write without any major prompts, but it can be so incredibly helpful. Just take 10 minutes and write about anything that comes to mind without worrying about grammar or coherence. You can write in long sentences, you can write in bullet points, it's whatever you feel would be most helpful in the moment. 
just let it flow. You may find that this brain dump, which is what a lot of people call it, helps to clear your mind and offers new perspectives on your challenge. And here's why. When you're writing, you're automatically having to slow down your thinking process because you can't write quite as quickly as you think. And that tends to organize your thoughts and bring clarity to whatever situation you're experiencing and also reduces overwhelm in the end because that current cascade of thoughts that you're probably dealing with before sitting down to write, it can feel like it's so much and you can't even focus on one thought or one potential solution. Writing things down can really help you to get more information about what it is that you're struggling with. And even in that writing process, it can help you to develop some coping strategies and some possible solutions. Now I want to move on to the specific activity, the specific homework assignment that I want you to try at home. This is called emotion mapping, and here's how you do it. Emotion mapping is a form of expressive art therapy that helps you to externalize and process emotions visually. It bypasses the analytical part of your brain and taps into your creative emotional side, allowing you to express feelings that might be difficult to verbalize. The act of choosing colors, drawing shapes, and reflecting on your work can provide emotional clarity and relief, helping you understand and regulate your emotions better. So here are the materials that you need. Grab a large sheet of paper, any size works, but bigger gives more space to express, some colored pencils, markers, or crayons, and a quiet, comfortable space where you won't be disturbed for about 15 minutes. So first, prepare your space. Find a quiet place where you can relax and focus. Lay out your paper and coloring tools in front of you. Take a few deep breaths to center yourself before starting. Second, divide your paper. Take the paper and draw a large plus sign, which will divide your paper into four quadrants. Each quadrant will represent one emotion. And third step, assign emotions to each quadrant. So you can choose any four emotions that you want to express or that resonate with you at this specific moment. You could choose from common emotions like joy, sadness, anger, and peace, or pick emotions that are more specific to your current experience. And if you need help identifying specific emotions, Google emotion wheel or feelings wheel. There's a lot of free versions of this tool and it'll help you understand some nuances of emotions that you might not currently or commonly describe, even though they might represent your experience. And fourth, map your emotions. In each quadrant, express the chosen emotion using colors, shapes, or abstract forms and symbols. You can do this in any way that feels right to you, but some examples might include trying to express joy through bright and warm colors, maybe spirals, circles, or playful flowing lines. Uh, for sadness, maybe you would choose darker or cooler colors like blue or gray, and maybe you draw raindrops or certain shapes to convey the heaviness of sadness. Uh, sometimes people would convey anger with red, sharp, jagged shapes or intense scribbles. And anger can feel sharp and energetic. So don't be afraid to really let your pen move aggressively if that's how you're feeling. And finally, add words if you wish. You aren't confined to express without words. If you want to use words and that helps you to express better, go ahead and add words as well. You can add single words or phrases within the quadrants that capture the essence of the emotion. Now that you've completed your emotion map, look over it. Once you've finished, just take a few minutes and think about what stands out to you. Do certain colors or shapes feel more prominent or important? And are there emotions that took up more space visually than others? It's also helpful in this reflection to identify any patterns. Is the way that you're expressing these emotions visually telling you something about how you experience them internally? So for example, you might notice that your anger section feels really intense, but sadness is more subdued and almost overshadowed. That could reflect that you're feeling more connected to your anger than your sadness, or that perhaps you mask your sadness with anger. And finally, I sometimes feel like it's helpful to also journal so that you can document your reflection. So if you have a journal handy, just flip it open and write down some of your impressions. They don't have to be two specific prompts, but in case you want specific questions to reflect upon, you can write about whether or not one emotion feels more dominant, whether or not you were surprised by how an emotion showed up visually, and also how to seeing your emotion on paper shift your understanding of how you're feeling. 
So here are a couple of tips for success. You gotta let go of perfection here. The goal is not to make something beautiful or realistic. It's just about expressing emotions in a way that feels true to you. The process itself is therapeutic and nobody has to see your work. Also, be honest. Don't worry about how it should look. Just let your hand move freely without second guessing or judging yourself. Essentially, it's a type of brainstorm, except you're not usually using words in an emotion map. Uh, you are basically just brainstorming visually. And be mindful of your reactions. As you create, notice how each color or shape makes you feel. Do certain colors calm you down? Do others stir up tension or release? That's helpful to know, and they can even turn into coping strategies in and of themselves. For example, if you know that blue has a calming effect on a day where you feel especially frustrated or agitated, perhaps wear blue or put a blue wallpaper on your computer. So I would be really interested in hearing from you how this activity worked. So make sure to comment and let me know if this was helpful, if this was insightful, and if this was a new way to look at your emotions and to understand them better. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Mental Health Bites with me today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, there's plenty more where that came from. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you have. Also, feel free to share this video with your friends and family who might find it useful. Stay tuned for more psychology content. And as always, thank you for your support.